This episode on obscure cameras is one that will literally haunt my YouTube and Google News recommendations for months to come as we're talking about the infamous Barbie Video Girl doll in what is probably one of the strangest integrations of a camera into a children's toy I've seen, which, you know, never goes wrong. We will talk about the known history of the Barbie Video Girl, the FBI warning, and alert made on this camera that caused a worldwide uproar by parents, and talk about what everyone really wants to know. Is the camera any good? Join us in uncovering the story of one of the world's most obscure cameras. It's usually customary for us here to review a bit of the history and backstory of the company that made the camera we are discussing, and that's usually a camera company. So I'm probably not going to go into depth too much on the whole backstory of the Barbie line that was made by American toy company Mattel Incorporated, but we will cover a couple beats of their history to get us to the release of this camera toy thing. Remember, you can tell it's Mattel. It's well, Mattel Incorporated was founded back in 1945 and produced its first hit toy in 1947, a ukulele called Uke a Doodle. We learned very early that without the child's participation in one way or another, you might not have play value. We were way ahead of anybody in the industry. It would really find success, though, when it became the first sponsor of the Mickey Mouse Club in 1957. So you can thank them for starting all the horrible kids commercials we had to grow up watching. They would finally come out with their biggest toy yet on March 1959. The Barbie doll that was pretty much just a ripoff of a German doll they acquired the rights to. Barbie started because of my daughter Barbie playing with adult paper dolls. I tried to convince Elliot that we could make a three-dimensional doll, and he said it'd be impossible for us to do. We were very, very disappointed initially. Half of our customers didn't want to buy the thing. So I was telling Ruth, see, I told you, you know. But as soon as it got on the counter, I was wrong, she was right. Since then, they have created countless Barbie dolls and had their fair share of controversy around so many different things that we won't get into. But we will get into some of the controversy surrounding the video camera doll, so stick around for that complete mess. Anyways, fast forward over 50 years to 2010 when Mattel had the most brilliant idea for a toy ever invented. They had made every Barbie doll imaginable. Why not stick a camera in one? And that's just what they did, releasing the monstrosity called Barbie Video Girl Doll in 2010. video and sound. Then I go to barbie.com slash video girl to make it a movie on my PC. This video camera had a memory capacity of 256 megabytes that could record up to 27 minutes of footage before you had to move the files to your computer. It could record in 320 by 240 resolution, super, super high resolution, and the battery could last for about 75 minutes, which I mean, it's better than a Blackmagic pocket cinema camera. I talk into this for all of my camera enthusiast friends and viewers out there, but I could not figure out what type of sensor was in this doll. And as much as I'd like it to be a CCD sensor, just because of the irony and history behind them, it's more than likely a CMOS sensor. And if you want to know the difference between those two sensors, check out our abandoned camera series where we talk nonstop about CCD and CMOS sensors. Needless to say, CCD sensor cameras 99% of the time were major issues for company and a big part of what caused camera companies to collapse or go bankrupt. But I don't think Mattel was under any kind of pressure here of collapsing as a company from this camera. To wrap up the rest of the specs for this camera, it had a tiny LCD screen on the back of the doll to see what you're recording, obviously, and the camera itself was in a bizarre construction choice placed directly in the center of the doll's chest that they said was actually part of her necklace. Sure. A USB port connection, a microphone, and lastly, it said it could produce 65,000 colors in the video. So there is that. I'm not really sure what that means specifically. They also include a specialized simple editing software called Video Girl Editing Software. They were really creative on the names. But this software was meant to be easy for kids to be able to use and edit their videos, which is a nice little touch. We've actually had this Barbie Video Girl doll for a while as we were using it on another video about seeing if professionals could film product videos on children's cameras. And you know, since we never released it, you can tell how that went for everyone involved. Not to mention finding out that Philip Bloom had already filmed with this Barbie doll anyways. I mean, I don't think I could beat him. But we managed to get some video from the camera to show off for this video and some up-close looks at how it was built. The video quality 
quality obviously is downright awful at 320 by 240 resolution. You can buy cheaper children's cameras on the market at this point that at least shoot in HD and not in a Barbie doll casing. And that's what really makes this whole toy camera quite dangerous and really makes you scratch your head and wonder how this made it off of Mattel's idea board. I'm having a little too much fun with this. Say hello to video girl Barbie. She costs $50. The camera is on the front, shaped like a necklace. On the back, you see an LCD screen with buttons for record, playback, and delete. Now she's got about 40 minutes of record time, and it's not HD, but you know what, that's okay. It's fine for a kid. Now the power with this Barbie lies in her thighs, literally, because that's where each battery goes. Now, as you can see, she's got this painted on one piece because otherwise most clothing would get in the way of her camera, so your accessories are a little limited. At first, public reaction seemed excited about this product, saying things like, the video Barbie girl will turn your kids into a director, with LaptopMag.com saying oddly that, even though the camera in the chest thing is a little weird looking, not to mention reminiscent of the Borg, I like the combination of the doll and video capture in general. And yeah, that sentiment would not last very long. Sounds innocent, a Barbie doll with a built in video camera. Yet this doll right here has some parents very concerned. There's a new controversial Barbie that the FBI fears could be used to make child pornography. A lot of tri-state girls have one of these on their wish list this Christmas. But the same feature that makes her so appealing to girls is now worrying the FBI and police departments across the country. When we're doing a search warrant looking for a media that a child pornographer may have used, we're going to have to put Barbie on the list, just like we have any other cameras, computers. The FBI sent out this alert to investigators that if searching a suspect, beware, Barbie could be holding evidence. So somehow an FBI alert to their agents to be on the lookout for these camera dolls at a crime scene and in certain cases was accidentally also sent to the members of the press who did what? Members of the press usually do, put stories about it anywhere they could. This quickly had many parents in an uproar thinking that their children were in harm's way with these cameras, and many called for the toys to be recalled and canceled. It's just weird. Yeah, who wants to be watching my kids play with their kid toys? But FBI spokesperson Steve Dupre said that the alert's intent was to ensure law enforcement agencies were aware that the doll, like any other video-capable equipment, could contain evidence and to not disregard such an item during a search. Not that the doll was inherently dangerous at the moment. Mattel said in a statement later that Mattel products are designed with children and their best interests in mind. Many of Mattel's employees are parents themselves, and we understand the importance of child safety. Despite the reassurance and the popularity of this toy, Mattel would quietly discontinue this camera in 2012. And at the end of the day, this camera was just a bad idea to begin with. The placement of the camera, the semi-hidden nature of it all led to too many problems and risks buying these for kids. And we have to remember that at this time, social media was still very new and technology like this in kids' toys was also still very new. So there was already a bit of a tendency to sound the alarm from parents with the unknown risks of social media and sharing videos across the internet. That would be something that as a parent, I would definitely monitor before it was posted anywhere. And I think we're beginning to see those early concerns really come to fruition in apps like TikTok or even YouTube, with the worrying trend of parents putting their young children in their videos. And when you get a look at the back end of the analytics and see that most of their audience is middle-aged men, I think the rising movement to keep kids off social media content is probably a good one. But this video Barbie doll from Mattel wouldn't keep them from creating more controversial dolls in the future, especially with that of the Hello Barbie that connected to the internet. And well, we know how that story usually goes. But just a few years after the Barbie Video Girl doll was discontinued, another camera was about to make its debut. And no, this wasn't a children's camera. It was what is quite possibly the highest resolution digital cinema camera to ever be released. The Lytro Cinema Camera with a whopping 40K resolution. And you can hear about that story in this video right here. 